We interact all the time. That's what makes up the everyday. The way we interact creates the world we live in. From chatting with the grocery store clerk, to presenting our opinions at a PTA meeting, to arguing our case about a late credit card payment, we exercise, or perhaps we don't exercise, civility in our everyday interactions with others. Our ability to have conversations about topics we disagree upon is called civil discourse, and this requires that we respect each other and listen to each other's viewpoints. That means really listening, not just responding when it's our turn to talk again, but listening to understand the other perspective. It might not be something we think about much, but our tone, the words we choose, our body language, all of these nuances of communication come into play, especially during times of disagreement. Any of these elements could ruin an interaction, and we could be headed for some tricky terrain with some crazy results. Martin, off to work, Katie. Mark, you know your, your dog was barking for five hours last night, man. Didn't you hear him? Can you put a muzzle on that thing? We didn't hardly get any sleep at all, man. I don't know about you, Mark, but I've got to go to work in the morning. Oh, and I don't? If it bothered you so much, why didn't you call? Why wait till now? Buster is no different than any other dog in this neighborhood. That is not the point, Mark. The point is that it's your dog that's causing all this problem. It's your dog that's barking and keeping everybody up. What are you going to do about it? You know, Mark, Buster barks all day, every day. I'm in my office. When you leave for work, he's just out there barking all day. It's driving us crazy. We've been putting up with this for years. If you had a job that got you out of the house, you wouldn't be sitting around listening to him bark all day, would you? Look, you b I work as hard oh, as you, you do. I mean, work. I do, too. I do sit at home you don't know what I do in my TV. house. You have no clue. Do you think you are? How many times have you seen a scenario like this played out? Well, okay, maybe not quite like this, but I bet this sounds kind of familiar. Conflict arises from differences. It occurs whenever people disagree over their values, motivations, perceptions, ideas, or desires. Sometimes these differences seem trivial, but when a conflict triggers strong feelings, civility goes out the window. The reality is that arguments happen, but frustration and anger don't have to be the end result. Free speech is the basis of this American democracy, and frequently we can get carried away when we get passionate about our beliefs, which in turn can lead to embarrassment, a major falling out, and perhaps even physical violence. Let's bring this back to the real world. I think it's worth taking another look at Mark, Jack, and Katie's situation. Let's invite some specialists to tell us what's really going on in this interaction and what tools they might use to turn this argument into a civil difference of opinion. This disagreement was about Mark's barking dog, but we both saw how quickly they got off topic. They didn't focus on the situation at hand. Jack made some sweeping generalizations. Mark lashed back, and then it was no longer about the dog. Purely a heated, personal exchange. Exactly. It showed very little empathy. They didn't focus on the situation or behavior of the dog, and their interaction was anything but calm. Let me add to that, there was way too much blame being thrown around. So the whole situation spiraled out of control, and nobody was even trying to listen. So, quick recap. Number one, focus on the situation. Two, respect the self-esteem of others. Three, look at solving, not blaming. And four, of course, listen so that you can understand. Okay, so now let's see how this could have played out. Great. Morning, off to work. Hey, Mark, good morning, how you doing? Morning. Hey, listen, I was wondering if, we, if you had a minute if we could talk to you about something. Uh, yeah, I've got some nice uh, gentle opening by both parties, I've establishing rapport. Well, Mark, the thing is that I don't know if you know, but uh, Buster, he's been barking a lot, and he barked all last night. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know, uh, I was at a meeting last night, and I didn't know he was barking. Yeah, it seems like when you're gone, that's, that's when it happens. And, and once he starts, he, he just doesn't seem to want to stop. You know? Okay, explain the situation. I'm really sorry. Um, I didn't know he barked that much. Thanks, Mark. We, we didn't think that you did know Buster barked that much because it always happens when you're gone. Uh, but we wanted to bring it up and see if we can't resolve the situation before it becomes a problem. Katie uses a problem-solving approach to engage Mark. I mean, I know how hard it is to, to get up and go to work in the morning when you don't get a good night's sleep, so. Mark responds with empathy. 
Yeah. Well, you know, we really appreciate you being so understanding about this. I wonder if there's any possibility that he can stay in the house sometimes. Uh, that's a possibility. He has some... Uh, it's not perfect, but an excellent start. Good job. Civil discourse is our ability to have conversations about topics that we disagree upon. It requires participants to respect each other and to listen to each other's viewpoints. That means really listening. Listening to understand the other perspective, not just responding when it's our turn to talk again. Remember, there are some key steps to diffusing a potential conflict. Focus on the situation. Respect others' self-esteem. Try to solve, not blame, and listen to understand. There are a lot of other techniques that can enhance clear and effective communication. If you'd like to find out more about practicing effective civil discourse, here are some great places to hone those skills.